Today's webinar topic is manage Parpona XRDB cluster day two operations using KubeDB. So uh, in the previous Parpona XRDB webinar, uh, we have showed how to deploy Parpona XRDB cluster, how to deploy the Parpona XRDB cluster with TLS and other uh, configuration and monitoring stuffs. So those are the day one feature. Uh, in the day two feature, we will talk about uh, scaling, upgrading, and this sort of stuffs. So let's start with the webinar. So uh, this is the table of contents. Uh, we will talk about these topics today. So uh, before that, uh, you have to uh, you have to install our KubeDB uh, Helm chart to get uh, start with the product to be cluster. Uh, so uh, this is the diagram of the Parkona XTDBs here. So I have also showed this in the previous webinar. So you can also take a look from our documentation. And so uh, let's start with the topics. So the first topic is horizontal scaling. Uh, that means you can, uh, in the Parkona XTDB cluster, uh, there are multiple nodes. Uh, you can uh, upscale the nodes or downscale the nodes using uh, a KubeDB Parkona XTDB ops request. Uh, for example, uh, you have a cluster of three nodes, but suddenly you want five nodes. So you can uh, upscale your cluster by using uh, or this feature, uh, horizontal scaling. Uh, this, this feature is also used by our autoscaler to automatically upscale and downscale Parkona XTDB clusters. And in the next, we will talk about the vertical scaling. Uh, in the vertical scaling, you can uh, upscale the CPU or memory or other computing resources uh, using this uh, vertical scaling ops request. Uh, if you have a node of, if you have a cluster, Parkona XTDB cluster of three nodes, uh, you can upscale or upscale uh, the CPU memories. Uh, Using vertical scaling of request, and uh, in the third step, we'll talk about how to reconfigure Parkona XTDB cluster. By reconfigure, we mean, uh, for example, in a Parkona XTDB cluster, there are uh, some variables that you want to configure after the cluster is bootstrap while the cluster is running. So you can do it using our reconfigure feature. So there are some variables. For example, you want to uh, increase the MySQL max connections, so you can do that. Uh, using this ops request. And also in the reconfigured TLS section, uh, you can add TLS uh, in the day two. That means you have a Parkona XTDB cluster, but you want to add TLS or update TLS, make some changes in the TLS specs. For example, uh, you want to uh, update the email given in the certificate. And also uh, one important feature is you can rotate the certificate. That means uh, uh, your certificate get expired after 30 day or a given period of time. So uh, it is kind of as well to uh, renew the certificate manually. So you can uh, renew the certificates using our reconfigured TLS ops request. And uh, another interesting day two feature is upgrading. So for example, you are currently using a version of Parkona XTDB, but uh, there are is a new version comes out. So you want to upgrade your uh, Parkona XTDB cluster. So uh, you can do this using our upgrading ops request. If you take care of everything, you don't have to worry about the uh, upgrading uh, cases. We will uh, handle that. So currently we are supporting two versions. And if a version get released, uh, we try uh, our best to add that as soon as possible in our support. And in the last uh, important Day two feature of our KubeDB Parkona XDB cluster is volume expansion. So uh, it's a normal case of uh, running out of the space in the database. So you can expand your database volume. So currently uh, we have two different type of volume expansion, two different modes. One is online, another is offline. In the online volume expansion, we uh, we work we, we expand the volume while the database is on the fly. So uh, but some a storage provider or storage class does not work with that. For example, if you use Longhorn, the online volume expansion does not work on that case. So, so uh, you can use an offline volume expansion that uh, takes some time and uh, the database also keep shut down for a moment, but uh, it take care of expanding the volume. So uh, these are the topics we will uh, demonstrate and talk about uh, in this webinar. So let's start. Let's start with the live demonstration. So before that, uh, I want to show you my workstation. So uh, in the workstation, I have installed a time cluster. 
and also i have installed start manager so you can install start manager from the start manager documentation and also i have installed kubedb so these are the things i have uh, currently installed here so we want to do everything in a specific namespace let's call this demo so i'm creating a namespace naming demo uh, okay so it's already been deleted okay so i was trying to delete the namespace before starting the webinar so it says it is not deleted okay so let's create uh, another namespace uh test and we will do everything uh inside this test name space so before that uh, i want to show you the uh, i want to show you the storage classes so uh, we are using a uh, topple vm provisioner also uh, along with the kind standard to storage class we are also using topple vm provisioner to uh, demonstrate the uh, offline uh, volume expansion part because in the normal kind standard storage class it does not support volume expansion. So uh, let's deploy a uh, let's deploy a Parkon HDB cluster. Before that, we want to we want to create a Parkon HDB cluster with TLS enabled. So uh, for that, we need some certificates to do that. So I have already uh, for uh, the certificate we need uh, issuer uh, which is support which is a, a cert manager feature. So let's check the uh, issuer. What is inside the issuer? So this is the issuer. So it has a CA and in the CA we have a, we have to mention a secret. So we have to create the secret uh, that will hold the issuer. So. So this is the uh, uh, in this directory we have ca.crt and ca.t already uh, generated here. So I want to create this issuer in case name space. Uh, create the secret and as we have I have the secret I can uh, I have the secret pxca so I can create the issuer which is needed in the secret. So let's uh, before adding the secret let's update this namespace as the demo namespace is not deleting okay so the issuer is created let's get the issuer okay uh, so the issuer is ready so now we can uh, install the uh, uh, xdb cluster so uh, let me show you the Parkona XDB clusters YAML. So this is the Parkona XDB cluster YAML that we will uh, install, and after that we will uh, run our off request or run our data features uh, in this Parkona XDB uh, cluster. So the API version is uh, kubedb v1 alpha 2, uh, and the kind name is Parkona XDB, and uh, we are naming this object sample exe sample Parkona XDB cluster, and we are uh, installing it in the namespace test. And how our version is 8.0.26. Uh, we want a cluster of three nodes. And here are the other features we are uh, uh, we are installing this in uh, topple the provisional storage class. And these are the TLS features. Uh, so here I have mentioned uh, the kind is issuer, uh, the issuer and the issuer name. Also, I have given some dummy data in the certificate, and I said, okay, this uh, we need this. Uh, we want to employ uh, SSL so the required SSL field is true and also the termination policy is wiped out that means if you delete the uh, Parkona XDB cluster uh, everything will be deleted so we have other termination policies so let's deploy it so uh, I have to make sure that the namespace is in test okay so I am deploying the sample 
Parkona HDB cluster. So as you can see, we have three nodes, which is in initializing a running set. Uh, it will take some take some time to uh, provision the cluster. So let's wait for a minute until this is created. So while uh, this Python actually cluster is creating, we can check into its logs what is happening inside. So if I check the log. Uh, we will see that the cluster is in bootstrapping state. So it says the sample PXC server synced with the group and other nodes will also join. So if I look into this number ones, Okay, so we can see from the number and node numbers tools that uh, it is trying to join the cluster. Okay, so the cluster is ready. Uh, that means we have a Parthenon HDB cluster running inside our machine. So if I exit into the Parthenon HDB cluster, exit into the port of Parthenon HDB cluster, this is the first port. And if I log into the MySQL server using the root password and it ID. Uh, we can show the cluster sizes. We can uh, see the cluster size. So we have a cluster of size three. So uh, in the next, uh, I want to uh, demonstrate the scaling of Parkon HDB cluster. So at first, we'll look into the horizontal scaling. So. Uh, let's deploy the horizontal scaling YAML first, then I will talk about what is inside the uh, YAML file or inside the CRD. So I already have the upscale YAML here. So okay, I drop that. Okay, so the upscale, horizontal scaling upscale is in progress. So while it is in progress, uh, let me show you the uh, features. So uh, the, this YAML uh, is a Parkon XDB ops request and API version is 50.com uh, alpha one. And here I have given the type of this ops request. So we have four or five types of ops requests. So this is a horizontal scaling. And uh, I have also provided the database reference. So each of the ops requests, I have to provide the database reference. And uh, this is a this is the main part of this obstacles. That is the number of members. So currently we have a cluster size three, but we want five members. So uh, uh, so it is a case of upscale. So it will upscale into five members. So uh, if I look into the ports, so uh, we can see uh, the members are adding uh, the additional members are coming one by one. So. Uh, previously, we had three members inside the cluster. Now, uh, member four is joining. So it will uh, join the cluster and become a sync with the cluster, and then the other members will come. Okay, so the number three has come, uh, successfully joined the cluster, and number four, uh, which is the fifth node of this cluster, is joining. And while doing this operation, our cluster status is critical. Uh, that means the cluster is operational, but it is not totally held. That means uh, the reason of this critical is uh, the fifth member is not joined yet properly. And uh, we are watching the Parkona XDB ops request in this box. So here we can see the 
uh, obstacles type is horizontal scaling and its status is progressing. And uh, the name of this obstacle is horizontal scale up here. So you can name whatever you want. So we can exit into the MySQL server from the first node and check the cluster size. So now we are inside the MySQL server from node zero and we can check the cluster size. Okay, so it, uh, currently the cluster size is five and also we can see the horizontal scaling is successful and the database is ready. Uh, that means we have upgraded my Parpana XDB cluster, uh, upscale Parpana XDB cluster with five node. So now we can also downscale the Parpana XDB cluster. So currently we have five nodes, but we want to make it three. So for this, let's check the downscale YAML. So the downscale YAML is similar to the upscale YAML, but uh, here the number of member is three. So let's deploy this. So this is a uh, horizontal downscale. And uh, as you can see, there is another obstacle still progressing state and uh, it will delete the ports or delete the nodes from the cluster one by one from the end. So it will initially delete the node four and then it will delete the node three. So we are expecting that last two nodes will be deleted as the as in the downscale of sequence, there are three nodes. So it will decide uh, uh, based on the cluster size whether should uh, the operator upscale the database or downscale the database. And also, if we look from the inside the MySQL server, Parkon HDB server, you can see the number of clusters is decreasing. So it will take one or two minutes. Okay, we can see that we have three ports running and also the cluster size is three. So the obstacles is also successful and the database will be in ready status soon. Okay, so this obstacles is also successful. That means we have upscaled our database and then downscale our database. So we can uh, horizontally scale our HDB cluster using QTB. Now uh, we will demonstrate the vertical scaling. So for vertical scaling, let's check out the uh, CPU and memory resources used in the first port. Uh, then we will apply the vertical scaling of request and again check the values. So I'm getting the first port of the clus uh, cluster uh, and checking its container resources. So here you can see in the request section, the current CPU is uh, half core and the memory is one gigabyte. So I want to uh, change this, or I want to change this uh, value. So, uh, that, uh, so uh, let's look into the YAML, vertical scaling YAML. So this is the vertical scaling YAML, uh, which is similar to the previous one, this part. That means we are giving the database reference and also giving this request a name. And uh, this type is vertical scaling. And in the vertical scaling section, uh, we are providing the request. So uh, in a, Parkon HDB cluster, each of the port can have multiple nodes, or it has multiple nodes, uh, coordinator nodes, exporter nodes, and also uh, coordinator container, exporter container, also the database container. So we, currently we want to change only inside the database container. So we are providing the limits, uh, request memory and CPU, limits memory and CPU. So previously it was 501 uh, gigabyte. Now we want it to uh, 600 and 0.4 core CPU. So let's deploy this. Okay, we have to change the name. 
space. Okay, uh, as you can see, uh, we have another of request of type vertical scaling, uh, which is in progressing state. Uh, it will terminate ports, uh, terminate all the database nodes or ports one by one and update its container resources. So if your database is in high load and you want to vertically scale each of the ports or each of the containers of the database cluster of QDB, you can easily do this using this vertical scaling of request. Uh, it's not only vertically scale the database containers, it also vertically scale the uh, exporter container and also the coordinator container, uh, which is uh, which coordinates the cluster. Under the QDB, you also have you also support autoscaler. So the autoscaler uh, operator uh, looks uh, into the current uses of uh, of QDB provision databases and uh, update uh, update the data uh, database resources, CPU and memory uh, using this of request. So the first part is in running state. That means it should have the updated resources we can check okay uh, we can see uh, that the cpu was previously 500 m now it is 400 m and also the memory was previously 600 megabytes now it's uh, previously it was one gigabyte now it's 600 megabytes so it, it has completed for the node zero uh, and let's wait for the other nodes to be completed So the node three is in terminating state. It updates the containers CPU and memory one by one. Okay, the third one is also updated with the new resources, uh, but it will take some time, take some time to update the status of the ops request because it is making sure that the third node is updated with the desired resources. Okay, so the particle scaling of request is successful and the database is also in ready status. And we can see that the ports are updated with new resources. So this is the scaling part uh, of the data feature or the OPS request of QDB. Uh, now let's check out the reconfiguration. So we support multiple reconfiguration. Uh, we can add reconfiguration we can add reconfigure and we can update the reconfiguration uh, we can delete reconfiguration and also we can apply reconfiguration for example you have already existing uh, reconfigure or uh, configuration file inside the mysql uh, or per connected db cluster database and uh, they are sorted in a uh, one by one in a file you can update based on the file resources or file types so now uh, in this webinar, I will just uh, demonstrate the add reconfiguration. 
so let's look into the let's check that uh, i want to update the max connection uh, of the database cluster so let's check the current value of the max cluster then i will uh, update uh, deploy the ops request of reconfiguration and then we will check if the thing is updated or not so i want to connect into the mysql server again First, I will check the variables. And we can see the max connection is 151. So uh, in order to create a reconfigure of request, we have to create the secret which will hold the uh, reconfiguration data. So let's look into the reconfiguration file. So this is the uh, configuration file, MySQL configuration file. Uh, in the top of the file, we have to mention that MySQL D, uh, this is the file format of the MySQL and similar databases. And uh, inside the file formation, uh, we are passing to uh, values that we want to operate. So it was previously 151 from here, but we want this 250, we want this to be 250. And also we are updating the read buffer size. Now uh, let's create a, let's create a, secret with this data and then we will mention the secret uh, inside the uh, add reconfigure ops request so let's create a secret uh, including this data so i am in the same directory so i will create a secret and i want to create this secret in the test name space and I want to name this secret PX config, that is for connected to be cluster config or whatever you want. And I want to mention the file PX config or CNF, which is this file. So the secret is created. Uh, now uh, let's look into the reconfiguration add ops request. So in the reconfiguration add ops request, the, this part is uh, similar as other sub request except this part. So this of request type is reconfigured. Uh, and in the configuration section, uh, we are saying that we want to reconfigure this uh, Parcon HDB cluster using config secret. And the config secret name is PX config that we have just created. So now let's deploy this config secret. Uh, let's deploy this Parcon HDB ops request, uh, which has the reference of the config secret. Uh, let's make the namespace test. Okay, so this is the file we configure at. So we can see uh, the reconfigured type ops request is progressing, which name is PXC ops reconfigure at. And it has already started uh, restarting the pod with the updated reconfiguration or updated configuration. So previously the value was 151 and after the ops request is successful, uh, we will expect the updated value. <laughs> so each of the nodes is uh, bootstrapping with new configuration and joining the cluster, uh, the Parcon ICDB cluster. Uh, in the meanwhile, I can show you the other reconfiguration types that we have. So this one is reconfigured at, but we can also uh, deploy this uh, reconfigure remove. That means we have uh, existing reconfigurations inside the cluster, but we want to remove all the reconfiguration when we want everything as default. So on that case, uh, in the configuration section, we will just pass this field uh, where the remove custom config is equal to true. True means we want to wipe out all the changes, or wipe out all the uh, configured value. Everything will be in default. And uh, also we can update the reconfiguration. So this is an example of inline update. And also we can use the apply config that uh, that is uh, inside the previously we have created a secret, but we can change the files inside that secret using this apply config of secret. So if the secret is 
circuit has some value with multiple files, you can add files or just overlay the files. So this is the apply config of request. You will get uh, the details information into our documentation. So the second part has just restarted and then it will restart the third port. So when a port is restarted, it makes sure say, it successfully join the cluster and everything is okay. Then uh, it will go for up operator will go for the next node. Okay, you can see the uh, last node is in permitting set. So in the meanwhile, if uh, as the first node is running state, uh, we would expect that uh, it has the updated value. So let's exit into the first port and connect to its MySQL server with its root user and password. And let's check the status. The show variables like nice connections. Okay, uh, we can see the max connection is 250. That means it is updated that we have wanted, uh, that we were expecting in this configuration file. It was previously 151. So all three port has successfully restarted with the updated MySQL configuration. And uh, very soon uh, the reconfigure obstacle test will be successful. And also the database will become ready. Okay, uh, so the, the database is ready. And let's wait for this OPS request to become successful. Okay, so the OPS request is also successful. Okay, so our next thing is uh, reconfigure TLS. So uh, I have uh, said earlier that in the reconfigure TLS, uh, there uh, are some uh, we needed uh, when you are running it, your database cluster inside uh, inside Kubernetes, uh, you may face a issue where you want to reconfigure at TLS with your existing cluster, or you want to update something inside the cluster, or you want to rotate the TLS uh, certificates. So we provide these features uh, with our reconfigured TLS ops request. So we have when, while we are creating the this database cluster. Uh, we have created the cluster with TLS enabled. That means uh, we have the certificate which is provisioned by the cert manager that are using inside the Kubernetes cluster or inside this database cluster. So let's look into the certificates. So let's check the database. Let's check out the database port first or database object first. Get port on HTTP and so this is the database custom resource uh, sample PXC and we want to see what is inside the database and then we will uh, do some changes here. So uh, in the database custom resource, you can see there is a section which is TLS that we have uh, given inside the YAML while deploying this database. And in, inside the TLS section, we can see we have multiple certificates. Uh, one is server. Uh, one is client and one is matrix exporter. So we have given some dummy data inside the servers portion. So we can see there is no email address uh, inside the certificate. So we want to add email address uh, for demonstrating the certificate reconfiguration. So let's do it. Also, we can get the certificates. So let's check the server set which is in the test time space of sample PXC. So this is the certificate created for this database cluster. And here in the spec section, we don't see any email address. So we would like to add email address uh, inside the certificate. So let's look into the uh, reconfigured TLS update of speakers. So we want to make the update. Uh, we also support add reconfigured TLS, remove reconfigured TLS, rotate reconfigured TLS, but in this webinar, we'll just uh, demonstrate the upgrade of request, upgrade reconfigured TLS. So here you can see we have given some more dummy data or more data just to demonstrate the changes. So here I have added the email address and also I have given some data 
uh, inside the client side and in the server side. So let's uh, deploy this OPS request. So uh, we configure TLS upgrade. So we want to upgrade the configuration. Okay. This should be in the test namespace. So it is already in progression state. The obstacle type is configured TLS. So it, it will take some time because while doing the uh, reconfigured TLS of request, uh, we have to make a downtime of the server database cluster because uh, when one port gets updated with the new certificate that does not work with the other part of the cluster which does not have the updated certificate. And the cluster is reconstructed after the, all the nodes are updated. So the node zero is updated with the new certificate data. And uh, so on the one and two will be updated. Then uh, it will uh, reconstruct the cluster based on the previous sequence number that is uh, handled by our uh, Park Maxim coordinator container. So it will take two or three minutes. And here in the status, you can see the status is not ready. Not ready means uh, the database is not operational, which is unlike to the previous status uh, that was critical. Critical means it is operational, but some of the nodes are not ready. But, uh, in this reconfigured TLS of request, you have to keep in mind that uh, the thing will be in not ready status. So the database will not be operational while doing this of request. Okay, you can see uh, all the nodes are updated or taken registered with the updated data, but uh, it will take some more time because uh, it is trying to, uh, each of the pod is trying to communicate with other pods and reconstruct the cluster based on the previous sequence number of the previous values. So it will take some time. Okay, so it is in ready status. And the uh, reconfigured TLS of secrets is successful, but uh, now let's, this is the moment to put this check the data. So, uh, as you can see, I, I, I have just uh, listed the certificate, uh, a server cert, which is the database certificate, this database certificate, and inside the database certificate, we have the email address that was not present previously. So we have successfully added or updated the certificate with new data. And also we can check from the Parkman HDB cluster database CRD. Uh, so here in the certificate section, we, you can see we have some updated data, data we, uh, that we wanted to add. So we have the email address and also uh, the client certificate has some data that was not previously present uh, in this section. So yeah, uh, this is this is the reconfigured TLS of request. Also, you can reconfigure uh, uh, in the reconfigured TLS there are some features like uh, you can add reconfiguration. So you have created a cluster, but uh, after some time you want it to add the TLS support uh, inside your cluster or connect to the cluster. On that case, you can do it using this of request. So this is the add reconfigured TLS of request. Uh, uh, you can also trigger the require SSL field. So if you turn this on, you can turn this on or off using this uh, update of request. And also you can remove all the uh, TLS configuration from the database cluster. So it will wipe out all the TLS things from the cluster. 
and also you can rotate the TLS. So in order to rotate the uh, TLS certificate of it per HTTP cluster, you have to just uh, create a reconfigured TLS of secret and all inside the reconfigured TLS of secret TLS field, you have to say that the rotate certificate is equal true. Uh, that means it will rotate the certificate. So th this is a mostly used feature uh, from this reconfigured TLS of secret. Okay, so uh, we have gone through the scaling, we have gone through this uh, reconfiguring, reconfigured TLS. Uh, now let's demonstrate a interesting data feature that is version update. So uh, there, uh, uh, you can see you will uh, you already have faced the version update issue that uh, you needed to upgrade your database cluster uh, from one version to the next. So we also support the version update of request uh, in the Parkon HTTP cluster. So before uh, doing this obstacles, let's check what is the current version. So while creating the database cluster in the YAML, we have given the version name, but I want to show you from inside the MySQL server. So show it's like, so this is the version uh, 8.0.26, uh, but uh, we can list, uh, we can see that there are more version that we are supporting for the Parkon activity. So let's get let's list the available Parkon activity versions that we are supporting. So these are the two versions we are currently supporting: 8.0.26 and 8.0.28. Currently we are in 8.0.26. So if we can update, uh, we can update our database to 8.0.28. So in order to do that, we have to create a version of it of sequest. So let's look into the version of it of sequest. So this is a sample version of it of sequest. Uh, here the first part is similar to the previous of sequest, uh, except the type. So the type will be upgrade. And uh, in the update, Field, uh, we have to just provide the target version. So we have to say, okay, uh, I want this version updated, but uh, this version should be present in this list. So we have to pick uh, any version that is uh, better than the current one and that is present in this list. So I'm taking uh, 8.0.28. So this is the uh, this is the YAML of the Parkon Exterior of Secrets version upgrade of Secrets. And now let's put it. Okay, so we can see we have a version update of request which is in progressing state. So it is uh, the similar way, it will update uh, one by one, it will update the nodes one by one and uh, join the cluster after taking the update. So now the first node is restarting with the new updated version and it will join the cluster and make sure that the cluster Uh, as we can see, the update of request uh, is successfully completed. Uh, we can see the database is ready and all the ports are updated and also the upgrade of request is successful. So in order to check that, uh, we can uh, log into the, we can execute to the port and connect to the MySQL server. And see what is the current version or is it the desired version. Mm. Okay, so we can see the version is uh, 8.0.28, uh, that is the desired version uh, that we have given as a target version uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the version of it of request. Uh, okay, so uh, this is the version of it of request and now we are left with uh, another of request that is volume expansion. So, the, so uh, using this of request, you can uh, upgrade your volume. Uh, so when your, your database is out of, uh, Storage, uh, you can use this subscript request. So, before uh, up, before deploying this subscript request, let's look into the PVC size, uh, which are, we are using as a database storage here. So, in the test name space, we have three PVC uh, for uh, one for each of the pod in the database cluster, 
and each of the PVC's capacity is one gigabyte, and the storage class is coupled game provisioner. Uh, so we can uh, we can uh, expand its volume uh, using this. Uh, we can expand the volume. So now we want to upgrade the capacity into two gigabyte for each of the port. So uh, let's start. So this is the volume expansion of request. So uh, the type is volume expansion and in the volume expansion field, uh, we are providing the mode is online and also providing the desired uh, volume that we want. So we want the two gigabyte of volume. So, and also the, we are expecting the volume expansion mode to be online. So uh, in the topple VM provisioner, we want the volume expansion mode online, but uh, if the, uh, storage class does not support the online volume expansion. You can try the offline volume expansion. Okay, so let's deploy this volume expansion of request. Uh, as the volume expansion of request is online, uh, that means uh, the database will will be in ready state and the ports will be. Uh, it will it will not take the restart. So the volume will be expanded dynamically. So if, if we get the volumes, we can we might see the changes uh, in the capacity. Uh, okay, uh, we can see that uh, our two nodes has already expanded to two gigabyte. Yeah, now three of the nodes are in the capacity of three two gigabyte very soon. Uh, and also the database is ready and the volume expansion is successful. Uh, that means we have successfully expanded the volume. But if you perform offline volume expansion, uh, which uh, which uh, restart the whole uh, database cluster. On um, that case, it will take some time and it will restart all the ports uh, in the database cluster. Uh, okay, so uh, this one was the last of request. So uh, we have already we have discussed about the how to deploy Parkun HTTP clusters uh, with TLS enabled. How can we scale up or scale down our cluster, and also how can we uh, scale the CPU memory resources? And also, we have talked about the reconfigure of request where we can uh, reconfigure different MySQL uh, con configuration values. And also, we have uh, showed how we can uh, reconfigure TLS properties uh, using Parkon XTDB of request. And then we have updated the Parkon XTDB cluster. And in the end, we have uh, showed how we can expand uh, our database clusters volume using volume expansion of request. So uh, that was the live demonstration part. Uh, so uh, if you have any question uh, regarding the demo or regarding this Parkon XDB cluster support of QDB, uh, you can ask. So this is the Q&A session. Feel free to ask anything. I would love to answer the questions. So it seems there have no question yet. With this, we are concluding the webinar. Thank you all. Uh, okay, so uh, before uh, uh, ending the webinar, I just want to know that uh, our Parkon XTDB obstacles feature will be uh, available uh, in our next release. So uh, you can get it for, for when our next release, uh, uh, you know, next release of QDB. So yeah, uh, okay, that's all from me. I'm sorry, yeah. Continue.